Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you guys some feminine hygiene tips that every woman should know. And before we jump right into this video, I want to share with you guys the word of the day. So the word of the day is confidence. And I want to read a little passage for you. A person without confidence is like an airplane sitting on a runway with empty fuel tanks. The plane has the ability to fly, but without some fuel, it's not getting off the ground. Guys, we're the plane and confidence is our fuel. Without confidence, we're not going to make it far. We're going to be stuck. So we need to be more confident in ourselves, be confident in the things that we're doing, and just at the end of it all, just do it. With confidence, it gives you the ability and the strength to just do it okay so let's jump right into the feminine hygiene tips so number one should be easy and i'm sure most of you are doing this already however for those of you that aren't i want you to remember to wipe from front to back front to back guys not back to front any of that because if you think about it you know that's when you start introducing bacteria into your vaginal area which ends up leading to UTIs and other kinds of infections. So remember we are going to be wiping from front to back. Tip number two is the use of cranberry juice or cranberry pills to help with UTIs or help prevent UTIs. So, so far I've shared with you guys two ways to prevent and to not get UTIs and that is wiping front to back and using drinking cranberry juice or taking in cranberry pills. And to just stay on the topic of, you know, taking pills and infections, you may want to consider taking a probiotic. Yes, you have yogurt, which can help, but you may want to consider taking some probiotic pills. You can purchase these over the counter, or you can also discuss this with your gynecologist, with your medical provider to see if they have better recommendations for you to start taking probiotics. The third feminine tip I want to share is if you're a doucher, stop douching. I'm sure at this point many of you know not to douche, but if you don't, stop douching. The reason why you want to stop douching is that douching changes the necessary balance of bacteria that we have in our vagina. So we have bad bacteria and we have good bacteria but we have a balance that we need once you start douching you offset that and that's when you start seeing different kinds of infections an example of an infection that you can get from douching is bv or bacterial vaginosis another one is pid which is pelvic inflammatory disease and this occurs when you have just normal bacteria that ends up going into the reproductive organs and just causing all of that to get inflamed if you're not aware that you have that then it can lead to other complications so to backtrack and to try to not have that happen or prevent that one of the ways to prevent that from happening is to not douche so once again guys if you're douching stop douching next feminine hygiene tip i want to share with you guys is the use of cotton underwear so if you're not aware Cotton underwear allows you or your vaginal area to breathe. I know sometimes they're not the most comfortable. However, like I said, they're allowing your vagina to breathe, which helps you to not get infections. There are some underwear that you also want to not necessarily avoid, but not use them as often as you probably do already. And those are, you know, satin underwear, silk underwear, um, those kind of underwears that, you know, just holds all the moisture, doesn't allow your vaginal area to breathe, 
those kinds of things. Like I have a pair right here. These are really comfortable, however, they do not allow my vaginal lower area to breathe and you can actually feel it. And at some point it becomes very uncomfortable. So like I said, to help with that, you want to stick to cotton underwear. And then while we're on the topic of underwear, you also want to avoid using underwear that's too tight. Also on top of underwear that's too tight, you also want to avoid using pants that are too tight. When you wear either underwear or pants or both in combination that are too tight, one, it's uncomfortable, like it's really uncomfortable. Two, you just allow for all of that to just stay warm and moist. And if you know anything about bacteria, if you know anything about infections which are caused by bacteria, um, bacteria loves warm, moist areas. So when you're wearing those tight underwears, when you're wearing those tight pants, you're allowing or you're putting yourself at a higher risk of getting some kind of infection. So to avoid that happening, purchase underwear and purchase pants that are better fitting. Fitting for your body in that area down there. Like I said, you do not want it to be too tight. Tip number six pertains to underwear once again, or the lack thereof. So when you go to bed, I would recommend that you sleep with no underwear. And I understand that some people are uncomfortable with this, but that's the great thing about sleeping with no underwear. When you first do it, it is uncomfortable. It feels weird. You're like, oh, wait, like something's not right. I, I need to put on underwear. Fight that feeling and sleep with no underwear. Like I mentioned in the beginning of this video, confidence, not wearing underwear to bed builds your confidence, believe it or not. The more and more you do it, the more and more comfortable you get. The more and more comfortable you get with yourself, the more confident you feel about yourself and your vaginal area and your just everything down there. Sometimes we get uncomfortable when it comes to our vagina, talking about it, discussing it amongst ourselves, like talking to ourselves, looking at ourselves, examining ourselves, talking about it with friends, other female friends that are going through the same thing that we're going through, we get uncomfortable. But once you start sleeping with no underwear, you realize that you are just confident with yourself. You're confident with your vagina and it just is what it is at that point. So I recommend that if you're not sleeping without underwear, that you try it. And try it once. That first time may be a little awkward, but try it again and then again, and then you'll see how much better and how much more confident you are. Also, Another pro to sleeping without underwear is that you allow for your vaginal area, your vagina, to breathe. As you've seen in the last other two tips that I shared, I'm aiming more to allowing your vagina to breathe, which helps to not or prevent infections. And I will throw in here really quick, if you're sleeping without underwear, please remember to wash your sheets often if not once a week, sooner than that. But remember, wash your sheets. Next we have tip number seven. I want you to see your gynecologist at least once a year. And I say at least because one I want to mention, discharge is normal. Vaginal discharge is normal. If you're someone who normally has some vaginal discharge because some have more than others, then use panty liners, that's perfectly fine. But gauge where your normal is because like I just mentioned, some people's vaginal discharge is more than others. So gauge where your normal is. If you notice that you have more vaginal discharge than normal, it has a smell to it, it's now like clumpy, it's changing color, like once you start seeing 
a change in color, then you need to see a gynecologist or your medical provider. You need to see someone. Something is not okay. You need to pay attention to your body. Your discharge can tell you a lot. Your vaginal discharge can tell you a lot as to what is going on down there. So pay close attention to that. Like I said, vaginal discharge is normal. Not like a lot, but it is normal. So pay attention to what your normal is. And if it's out of the norm, get seen. If you're enjoying this video thus far, then hi, my name's Carla, and on this channel, I share ideas on fashion, beauty, and lifestyle. If you enjoy these kinds of videos, please subscribe down below. Okay, and now on to tip number eight, and it involves these little things right here. Well, you don't actually need two of them, you just need one. I have two because off topic really quick, I use one for my makeup, but I use the other one to dry off. So when you come out of the shower, yes, you dry off with a towel, but chances are your lower area is still wet. It's still moist, it still has water down there. So what I do is I take one of these fans right here, and it's actually this one, I don't mix both, but I use this right here and I dry off under there because like I've mentioned throughout this video, water, moisture leads to bacteria, which leads to infections. So to help with that, I dry off with a fan. If you don't have one of these, because I will admit, I don't use this all of the time, just use a regular fan in your house. Yes, you may have to lift your leg up a little bit to dry off, but it doesn't matter, you're drying off. That is what you want to do. Yes, you want to use your towel to dry off as much as you can, but still I say dry off more for that like little added extra dry off. Dry off with a fan. You will find this so much better and it feels better. You don't feel wet and like you need to dry off again. If you're still watching this video, then thank you for sticking in and we're almost done guys. Tip number nine are using baby wipes or purchasing baby wipes. These are really good. They're so good for just having that extra clean when you either use the bathroom to urinate or you go number two. Baby wipes are amazing. Yes, if you just urinate, you can use just some feminine wipes, but I personally use baby wipes. Another tip that I would have though is to just do a second wipe with toilet paper just so that once again, you don't have that moisture because baby wipes, feminine wipes, any of those wipes are wet. So if you're just wiping with a wet wipe, then you wanna just do that second wipe with something dry like toilet paper or something like that just so that you're not leaving that moisture there. Yes. Like I said, baby wipes are amazing because it cleans better, they clean better. However, you still want to do that next wipe, that last wipe with something drying to remove the moisture. And lastly guys, tip number 10, everyone should be using. Every single person, every human being should be using or doing, and that is washing your hands before you use the bathroom and washing your hands after you use the bathroom. This is critical, guys. You do not know what you're using or touching or whatever prior to using the bathroom. So that's why you need to wash your hands because you don't want to start touching down there with your dirty hands, anything like that, because like I've mentioned throughout this video, we are trying to not get infections. So wash your hands prior and wash your hands after because you also don't want to be spreading infections to anyone. So wash your hands prior to prevent giving yourself infections and wash your hands after to prevent giving, yes, yourself, but also others infections. 
Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please remember to give it a thumbs up and also subscribe down below. Also remember to be kind to others as you never know what anyone else is going through, but also because it's the right thing to do. Walk in peace and joy. Until next time. Hey, oh,